So we're going to work on some, um, work on a homework problem from chapter two. I mean, pardon me, a homework problem from chapter three. And as you know, chapter three is the accounting information system. And during our lecture, we talked about uh, the three steps that we're talking about in this chapter. It's um, preparing journal entries, posting two T accounts, and preparing a trial balance. So that's what this problem is going to be. This is problem, this is problem 3-5, okay? Problem 3, that's chapter 3, problem 3-5, so it's problem number 5 in the textbook. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a series of transactions, and for each transaction we're going to prepare a journal entry, and then Later on, we're going to post those journal entries to the T accounts and then summarize each T account to come up with a net balance and prepare a trial balance. So let's go through all the journal entries and then we'll post them and prepare the trial balance. So this is the time where you might want to stop the video and do the problem and then come back to the video and watch the solution. So transact. So this is um, problem five. Alea Architects incorporated as licensed architects on April 1, 2022. During the first month of operation of the business, these events and transactions occurred. April 1st, stockholders invested $18,000 cash in exchange for common stock. So we're going to have um, our account title here. And then we're going to have a debit. And we're going to have a credit for each one of these things. So the first journal entry is a transaction where the investor contributed $18,000 into the company in exchange for common stock. So that's going to be a debit to the cash because the cash increased debit $18,000 and a credit to common stock of this corporation for $18,000. Again, debits have to equal credits and it does. Next transaction, hired a secretary receptionist at a salary of $375 per week, payable monthly. Well, although this is an event, it's not a transaction that requires a journal entry. So no journal entry required. Next item, paid office rent for the month of $900. So we have a rent expense and they paid cash. So an expense has got to go up, rent expense. We increase an expense with a debit and they paid cash. Cash goes out the door, cash goes down. We decrease cash with a credit. So our next transaction is a debit to rent expense for $900 and a credit to cash for the same $900. Next transaction, purchased architectural supplies on account from Birmingham Company for $1,300. So purchase supplies, that's an asset. We increase an asset with a debit. And they purchased it on account. That means an obligation to pay. That's a liability. So we're going to increase a liability with a credit. So we're going to debit supplies. Again, as an asset for $1,300. And credit accounts payable. For $1,300. Next transaction. Completed blueprints on a carpet on a carport and build the client $1,900 for services. So they earned some revenue and they didn't get paid in cash, but they have a receivable. The client's going to pay them. So a receivable went up. So we're going to call this accounts receivable. It's an asset. And it's in the amount of $1,900 and they have revenue, let's call it service revenue. For 
$1,900. So that's the first group of journal entries. We're going to have to move along. We're going to have to erase this. We get to the next bunch. In the next transaction is received cash, received $700 cash advance from M. Jansen to design a new home. So they received cash in advance of doing some work. So they're gonna have a, an obligation to perform. So they're gonna debit cash for the amount of the transaction, which is $700 and a credit to the liability unearned revenue the seven hundred dollars the next transaction occurs on the 20th received twenty eight hundred dollars cash for services completed and delivered so they received twenty eight hundred dollars for services performed so they're going to have a debit to cash for twenty eight hundred dollars and a credit to service revenue. On the 30th, they paid the secretary receptionist for the month $1,500. So they have an expense, let's call it salaries expense, and a credit to cash, because they used cash to pay that person. It was in the amount of $1,500, and there you go. And the last transaction we're interested in is paid $300 to Birmingham for accounts payable due. So we had a previous transaction where they owed them some money. So now they're going to actually pay it. So we're going to debit. We're going to reduce that liability, accounts payable, with a debit in the amount of $300. And they paid cash. Cash goes down in the amount of $300. So those are your journal entries. Now what we're going to want to do is post those journal entries to the T accounts. And they told you which T accounts they're going to be using. And we can put some of them up now. They told you that they're going to be using cash. They're going to have accounts receivable. They have supplies. Have accounts payable. Unearned revenue. Common stock. service revenue, and we've got some other expenses here that we'll have to just kind of deal with. So the first transaction, the first journal entry was a debit to cash for $18,000 and a credit to common stock for $18,000. The next transaction was a, was a, a rent expense. I think I can get it in here. And that was a debit to rent expense for $900 and a credit to cash for $900. Next transaction was a debit to supplies for $1,300 and a credit to accounts payable for $1,300. Next transaction was a debit to accounts receivable for $1,900, credit to service revenue for $1,900. Next one was a debit to cash for, for uh, $700 and a credit to unearned revenue for $700. 
Then we had another transaction where we debited cash for $2,800 and a credit to service revenue for $2,800. We had salaries expense. And that was a debit for $1,500 and a credit to cash for $1,500. And lastly, a debit to accounts payable for $300 and a credit to, to cash. So we've posted to all of our accounts. And what we want to do now is we want to come up with a net balance in each one of these. Now, it's pretty simple because for some of these, that's the net balance. That's the net balance, net balance. This one's a little different. It's a thousand bucks, right? The net of debits and credits. This one's 700, 900. This one here, it's got a few different numbers in it. It's going to be $4,700. But the account that has a lot of the activity is the cash account. So we've got a debit of $18,720, $800, or credits. The net balance in this account, $18,800. Taking the net of each one of these. Now, each one of these accounts now we are going to use to come up with a trial balance take the transfer of the net balance to a trial balance again the trial balance is what a listing a summary of all the debits and the credits in that account So we're going to have a debit and we have a credit. First account we have is cash. And we said that was $18,800. Next account was account receivable. That's also a debit, $1,900. Supplies, $1,300. Next account is accounts payable. That was a net credit of a thousand bucks. Unearned revenue, we said was 700 bucks. Common stock, a credit of $18,000. Service revenue, $4,700. We had salaries expense, $1,500 in rent expense of $900. We're going to add our debits and our credits, $24,400, $24,400. So this is our trial balance. Again, a trial balance is a summary of all the net balances from our T accounts, trial balance debits and credits. And what we're going to see in the next chapter is that we're going to use this trial balance to then prepare our financial statements. So that is problem three. I'm sorry, that's problem five from the Kimmel book. Thank you.